Good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen, those who are um, watching us, this event at Ukraine Crisis Media Center. So we have the briefing uh, right now, briefing that actually is dedicated to the most discussed event, not only in Ukraine and abroad, but unfortunately the consequences that all the services are trying to handle right now. So many people were affected after the Kahovska HPP was blasted. I don't speak of the dam, but the HPP, we all realized that it destroyed the system, the system itself, and uh, this international, you know, wave. Last night, we had the UN Security Council discussion related to this topic, and um, all the discussions are somehow related to the consequences. They're circling around the consequences of this disaster. And uh, we'd like to discuss with you today to, to focus more not only, let's say, uh, on the consequences of uh, specific, like environmental consequences, what was being discussed, the destruction of the Kohovska Dam, but to focus on something, on something that was discussed last year quite actively, the impact of the impact on nuclear safety and security, Zaporizhia, NPP, what is the kind of a process where it leads to? And can we speak today of a new stage in Russian war against Ukraine, new means of war, of warfare? And what is actually the purpose? What's the key purpose? And is it real today for us? Can we observe the increase of nuclear if nuclear threats because uh what is iaa doing giving some very typical statements trying to calm everyone down and uh we can see these threats are somehow diminished but um uh, i do think that's important to get some expert opinion on that so we have a chance today to provide some independent expert opinion from people who do not represent today uh, any state agency, but they do know they have a, enough of expertise. They took very responsible positions and uh, they're actually observing all that. They, they know what the situation is, they can make some forecasts, give some proper opinion. It would be really great, I guess, and it's, it's quite fair to share this with people. These opinions, maybe some ideas and proposals can be even used right now to <clears throat> enhance our official state position, Yuri Kostenko. I will not introduce the part of your political activity. Governing and public activity as an expert, so uh, expert on environmental issues and nuclear safety and security, a person, as far as I know, who was uh, the candidate on IEEE, had position if you if you took that, maybe the situation would be different. So the ex-Minister of Environmental Protection, Nuclear Safety and Security, Yuri Kostenka. I would like you maybe to start, Miss Olga Kosharna, who, uh, well, it's a little bit easier because Olga Kosharna is everywhere right now. I've just seen her in the morning at, you know, all Ukrainian platforms and potential ones. So nuclear energy expert in brief. Okay, so Yuri, please, I'd like you to give us the picture, the broad picture it leads to. What should we do with that? And uh, what's what's next? Like, what's after the event? What's going to what's waiting for us? Thank you, thank you so much. I just wanted to focus not on the consequences. Yes, the dam is destroyed, and uh, mostly we stress on what's going to happen. You know, the forecasts for environmental situation, but. These are the consequences of this horrible aggression, that atrocity that Russia is demonstrating. Russia is ignoring all the rules of war, the customs, and basically Russia is a terrorist. This terrorism started when Chernobyl 
NPP was seized, later Zaporizhia NPP, and according to IAEA standards and norms, international norms, this is the nuclear terrorism. Unfortunately, um, the UN Security Council and IAEA may say that they have almost ignored that, but they did not pay a lot of attention. But for me, as for me, it became a new stage, definitely, of a modern war, for modern warfare, led by Russia, because, you know, what the world is afraid the most, using the weapons of mass destruction, and yesterday's uh, blast of the dam, made by Russia, we can call it, already we can see that Russia starts using the weapons of mass destruction, destroying people, ecosystem, we can call that ecocide, or genocide, we can use that word, but Primarily, I'll call it the use of WMD. That's what it is by Russia for the first time in the 21st century. And uh, what all the experts actually try to warn us because Putin is threatening with the nuke, you know, like a Neanderthal threatening with the nuke. When the red lines were set, you know, somehow Russia diminished it a little bit, but nobody paid attention to it, that Russia is holding a, a whole NPP as a captive, all the people there as captives, and the blast of the NPP, the explosion can actually uh, lead to worse consequences than even uh, the situation in Japan during the World War II. You know, as a person with a lot of political expertise, and uh, the one who met so many various international politicians and decision makers and Ukrainian citizens as an ex-minister of environmental protection and nuclear safety and security at the meetings on potential threats. Uh, Chernobyl NPP does not function, the reactor is destroyed. 200 tons of nuclear fuel, what processes are they, you know, these physical processes. Many people don't know how to forecast what it may lead to. How to fight that? People people are somehow calmed down with the Chernobyl NPP that it's under control. But they, they told me that, that it was it was under control in nineteen ninety six as well. It was like controlled, but but people receive that dose of radiation, uh health of the, was affected people were not like people are not interested in that whether this is like a peaceful nuclear energy or this is a weapon we don't know what's happening there you know because we have territories occupied we don't know the exact number of people who died or injured people are not interested in the damn explosion they want to stay healthy and alive what russia did i call it like a new stage of warfare russian aggressor is opening a new stage of that Horrible warfare, that horrible atrocity against humanity. It's not just against Ukraine, it's against humanity. There's no response uh, I would love to get from international experts, world leaders, and uh, security structures, primarily UNSC, of course, IAEA. No adequate response to the threat <sighs> will still <laughs> We'll still have these threats only growing in future, I think. And no proposals on how to avoid this escalation. Nothing. I don't see it. The fact that Russia is uh, saying that we are escalating because we have high mass and, you know, getting all the types of weapons and they have this mantra, this blah, blah, blah all the time that this, has, this is the escalation the West is doing. But the West cannot give a consolidated response and say that Russia with its actions not just leading to escalation, it's leading to the Third World War because WMD is already used. It's there. That's something that international mass media do lack now. My first recommendation, at least to Ukrainian uh, authorities, that's how we need to state and talk about that, not just to speak of as aspects like who blasted which parts or like the the scale of environmental impact no this is the new stage in russian 
warfare against us. So as a specialist on nuclear safety and security, I can say that unfortunately, all the roads will lead to Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The technology of blasting Kahovska Dam, what Russian terrorists used, we know what they did. In October last year, they started bringing explosives to the HPP and uh, placing it in the spots which will give the highest impact. What we saw actually last night. This is happening unfortunately as well at Zaporizhia NPP. Uh, I have some non-official information at in turbine uh, chambers and in many other premises. Uh, Russian terrorists were bringing, they were bringing explosives to that premises as well. They're, they are mining. Nobody knows what the scale is. Just the Russian HQ, military HQ knows that. On the other hand, IAEA mission. Mr. Grossi did the only useful thing, actually, but they are not allowed to enter those premises for control. You know that the key IAE task is to control the non-dissemination of WMD. Ukrainian <coughs> Ukrainian nuclear power plants, in particular Zaporizhia, they are uh, under legal control of IAE. I signed the agreement uh, with Director General of IAE on security guarantees in uh, 1996, 1995, excuse me, and. Uh, I can definitely claim that the fact that inspectors are not allowed to go there, they are fully entitled to visit any NPP under their control. Not even any premise, like uh, they can dig deep into technologies. This is a grave violation of uh, international law by Russia. So my opinion is that What we had the incident at Kahovska HPP and uh, what Ukraine is experiencing, this is just a prerequisite for something that may happen at the worst scale. A huge nuclear disaster we may get at Zaporizhia NPP. If now Russia observes a purely diplomatic, like very neutral response, to its use of WMD, if there will be no response, I uh, don't want to be a bad prophet or an angry prophet, you know. I just don't want to mention anything that may happen at Zaporizhia NPP. This, this is the key thing that today we have to focus on. Ukrainian authorities, president, government, and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, as the loudspeaker of our opinions, giving the statements, have all debate no possible institutions. First of all, the security institutions run these debate, but by diplomatic channels to uh, carry out thorough negotiations with our partners, those who help us to eliminate the uh, consequences of Putin's atrocities. Not just to warn them, but to ask them to uh for the european countries and the us to launch very harsh negotiations on red lines for putin to not to be able to cross because we don't want to have that nuclear disaster at the british npp thank you for this introduction word and um, <clears throat> obviously we do realize that this may be the narrative of the enemy of the russians just to um create more tension, but we have to tell the truth. We have to respond. And I think that the opinion that you mentioned, speaking of the risks, it's very proper because just calming down, uh, considering the situation, like the official structures doing it, like official institutions are doing, just calming down that nothing's going to happen, no threats, but it's not just about imminent threat. It's we speak that the control over NPP is in the hands of terrorists with explosives, you know, with all that, with mines. Uh, doesn't matter what is spoken of the dam and Zaporizhia NPP, we speak of explosives 
it's a it's a catastrophic situation nobody is responding to this is my general impression but uh, Olha, we as ukrainian citizens what concerns we may have around this topic it's always discussed like the level of water in the pond <laughs> are there any alternative options you know this part like what we have today do you agree with the this official opinion that right now there is no imminent threat can we then say that it's not gonna be there the threat when it's then there's no control is it important for this control to be kept by ukrainian specialists and maintained by specialists can we actually prolong it and the hands that are keeping control are now very Hard to forecast the maintenance of the station. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. First of all, I'd like to stress that Zaporizhian PP Energy blocks uh, since September 2022, five blocks are in so called cold regime and one uh, in the hot mode, the fifth one. In eight months, the reactors were cooling down and the temperature of uh, the first contour heat carrier was going down so for the nuclear fuel to be cooled in the active zones right now we need to have less water uh, compared to when they have their full capacity this is first thing i just want to mention secondly i'm very concerned that fifth energy block is still not in the cooling mode this should have been done by Derzatom Rehulvania to change the lines. It's a requirements. Putin, he signed the order, despite that he signed the order on transferring the Zaporizhian PP to Russian Federation control, in order to say that in Ukrainian lines, uh, by January 1st, 2020, this license is in effect. Therefore, Derzatom Rehulovania uh, made a very late decision. They were too late for that. And the decision to uh, cool down certain blocks in February 2023, they had to do it uh, in August 2022 when the shelling started, systematic shelling of uh, the NPP system. Yes, right now there is a pond, a cooling pond next to NPP and uh, there is a mirror eight square kilometers approximately and the level above the sea 16.6 meters it's enough it's enough for uh, to keep that mode maintain that mode for all the blocks just a couple of months yes apart from it we have mobile pumping stations uh, which were purchased after the Fukushima disaster. We have mobile diesel generators. Pumping stations can be used as these have, you know, these look like the uh, fire extinguishing vehicles up to two kilometers of these tubes. If the cooling pond loses water, uh, due to evaporation or technological losses, we may actually uh, fulfill it with these pumping stations, just upon one condition: if these are not if these are not stolen, if these are not stolen, because my sources, uh, some people, someone of the personnel tells me that big trucks with tents are leaving the station at night, and uh, there is a proof that. They stole equipment uh, from the training center, manipulators, computers, computer codes and software, you know, everything. This was the European Union project uh, held jointly with Ukraine to launch this European center for the maintenance personnel to train people for uh, reactors of the type that is used there, you know, in Central Europe as well. So. Looting is taking place uh, on the on one hand. You know these Atesian wells and so on. But today I uh, wrote a post on Facebook that Russia is 
committing a crime in advance. What's they doing? Like, they mined the Kahovska Dam. And HPP last week, Putin, in his comments to media, notified on this dirty bomb and related it to Zaporizhzhia NPP. And uh, yesterday, Russian propagandists uh, made this video that two Ukrainian, as they call them, Ukrainian, so-called Ukrainian saboteurs with this dirty bomb, you know, and explosives and so on. So, they are preparing this informational environment for future provocation at Zaporizhzhia NPP will have it because this is like a monkey with a gun. And this is a cult of death. In Russia, they have a cult of death. They uh, don't have sympathy, empathy. They don't feel sorry for anything. They don't think about people. Kherson and Zaporizhia regions are occupied partially. According to Russian constitution, they take it as their territory. So they destroyed a dam to use WMD for their own people, as they think that these are own people. And their government made a decision for this investigation not to take place. Yes, this is, this is not an accidental thing. On May 30th, Russian government adopted a decree that it's prohibited to investigate the anthropogenic disasters by January 1st, 2028. So when Ukrainian license is off at Zaporizhia NPP, and all the territories were there, all these so-called republics and temporarily occupied Zaporizhia and Kherson parts. So it's not an accident when it comes to risks. And IAA mission, I do support my colleague. Yes, IAA mission is limited in its mandate at Zaporizhia NPP. And I have a proof and personnel that they don't have a right to move freely and the station, they don't have a right to communicate with personnel of IAE, of the NPP, uh, just, just with the translator who is the security service, Russian security service uh, person. The access is prohibited to certain uh, premises. There's the, 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 there is problems. They actually are breaking the seals of IAEA, you know, and uh, I'm pretty worried at the beginning of May when this fake evacuation was taking place from another hotel at IAEA website, we had a message that mission says that they can't evaluate the scope of evacuation because they had no chance to reach an hotel. How many personnel we have there? Three or four, but uh, they are hostages. Uh, apart from convention, international convention on uh, preventing the acts of nuclear terrorism, Russia also did the same at Chernobyl uh, NPP. We have this uh, convention on uh, preventing the hostage taking. I don't remember the exact title. So. I can see what events we have in IA mission. Um, they carried out their task. So they informed the world via the UNSC with the reports on what's happening at Zaporizhia. But this mission is not necessary there right now because uh, I forecast that Russia may use uh, IAEA as hostages when they leave uh, the NPP. Russians may kill them. This is just the barbarians of 21st century. What Grossi says, that rotation that did not take place on May 26th due to the weather conditions because there was, the roads were flooded for the rotation and uh, this mission has been there for second months. Uh, he is leading the rotation. This is the PR for the direct general. He wasn't able to create a security zone within seven months. He claimed in September he would, yeah. Uh, in IA, who is handling the security issue? Not the Russian representative? Yes, we have department. Uh, the Grossi deputy, Chudakov, his surname is, I guess. Uh, Ukrainian party, uh, 
actually wanted to have no Russians. But we have the, the, the agents, we have uh, those affected by Russia. But the Ukrainian party has full right to agree upon the mission's composition. Five new principles. Which basically have no relations to nuclear security and safety. So these will not be taken seriously by Russia. At UNSC meeting, it was clear Russia stated no military, no heavy ammo, no artillery, no tanks, nothing, no explosives, like there's nothing. We're doing everything, international commitments and standards of uh, Russian legislation and nuclear energy. Ukrainian party says that we take this into account, but uh, we insist on the occupation, on uh, transferring this NPP to Ukrainian authorities' control. The resolution of IAEA leaders should be there, but they have a meeting in Vienna. Three resolutions already was given by the board, no response. So, the mission has to be complete because uh, We do not need to put the experts' lives at risk. But the following incident, I do hope we won't have it. I'm pretty sure we will get one. At these, at Zaporizhia NPP, at least uh, the, the option, I understand that we speak of the problems right now. Okay, no cooling problems. The key problem is a little bit different, yeah. Right now I understand that. It's not even the cooling thing. I'll mention the international aspect, if you please. Uh, first of all, what I observe, what we observe for quite a long period of time, what we've been observing, all the discussions are shifted to the areas which are secondary because we have basic issue, the aggression, the violation of UN statute and... Uh, they try to find some solutions during the war, active warfare period. As yesterday at the UNSC meeting, what they were looking for, they're trying to find some formulas, like two-party formulas. And it really is a concern for me because um, we are stepping away from the key problem, military. So military are occupying the nuclear object. Okay. Explosives, is it there or not? Where it's placed, who brought it? It's a horrible situation because we have the uncontrolled process, as you said. IAEA simply cannot handle it. They have like different functions, they have narrow functions. If being honest, they have narrow functions. But what is really weird, what is surprising, I'll give my own opinion. Quite often, it's the narrative, it's in the narrative of Russians. Let's uh, switch it to the Russian network, Russian grid, they, they start saying, and Grossi says yes. We understand that this may be a blackmail. One block in hard mode can be turned on and off, which gives a huge threat. <laughs> it's just, it's a blackmail. We, we, we know what the Russian narrative is. We do not need to close our eyes. Escalation demonstrating the readiness of Putin to go to the very end, as they say, the final spot. And I think this 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 is the, the, the end uh, result that we'll get, the anthropogenic disaster. I don't think of any other levels. I can't imagine these, but I can imagine that. And uh, I'm so surprised that a week ago, when there was a direct statement from the Russian Leader, we have quotes where he openly said, he mentioned the use of some dirty something at nuclear power station. He said, yes, we will use it uh, to push your population, push your people towards something. And um, now we have a problem coming to a different stage. I agree, this is a different stage. And methods to respond to it, we still do not have a consolidated method. We can see at today's uh, 
UNSC meeting, lack of coordination, lack of, they're not acting timely. Russian propaganda, unfortunately, we have to claim it already. Yes, they're lying, but this, this, this lie really supports and helps those countries who really don't want to admit the fact that Russia starts, I'll say softer, that Russia starts using WMD, but they actually violate the first protocol Geneva Convention, Article 56, Article 15 of the second protocol, war crimes. This is obvious. They're violating it. And I just want to stress the very fact of mining, which is actually confirmed. <laughs> I'm speaking about Kohovska Dam. It's a war crime. And the explosion itself, it's a war crime. And uh, with all our resources, we have to do it, you know, for the control over these objects to be transferred to the hands of experts who can do it in a non-stressful mode, ensure the nuclear safety and security. I can't imagine how those people are actually working there, the Ukrainians. Uh, I do perfectly understand that Russia will not stop in this situation. They, they will not stop. They can't be stopped with anything. How to minimize the threats? Obviously, the very first thing we have to do is to consolidate the opinions of all the key players who uh, stand against dissemination of WMD, who don't want Russia to use the nuke and to threat with the nuke. Last year, we had those threats. Yes, we had some couloir discussions. And yeah, they stopped uh, giving the nuke as an argument. Now we start this wave again. They started. I mean, they started again. And the idea that something can be done in a shadowy way and the Putin can be re -con um, reconvinced. We have to speak truth right now. For occupiers, for their armament to leave the infrastructure objects, like the station. We can say that the HPP... I know that Yuri mentioned it previously, how many objects of these, how many such objects we have there that part, nobody controls it. We don't know what happened in the mines uh, where we had during the USSR, we had explosions and they tested nuclear uh, weapons there. So we don't know what's happening there, Russia's closing it. So we all do realize, so, we have to deoccupy Ukrainian territory as fast as we can. It's not just the best way, it's the only way. The only way which gives effective control over a situation. When you speak about environmental safety in other areas, and nuclear safety and security, and uh, there are no such focuses. There, there isn't such even, there isn't even like, uh, what is my concern? There's no one voice, Ukraine, today but we have very dynamic uh story but russians knew when exactly that would be done and they knew what steps they would take later how to inform coordination timeliness of ukrainian institutions it uh, it should be at other level otherwise we are losing yesterday it was not our victory at UNSC meeting, despite the help of the partners, but still we realize that facts and proof, our partners should get it very fast and we had to do it just like at the previous meeting. This time it was not that clear and smooth. When at 3 a.m. you have this explosion, you can't wait till morning when something starts happening. For me, it was a situation nobody should allow. Our MFA has full authority to start discussing directly. There's no need to get approval from Bankova. Please be very quick. Someone started doing this like early in the morning, someone even in the afternoon, you know, giving information. This is wrong. This, this, this is a wrong logic, a very distorted logic. In today's world, the early bird, the one who gives the statement, has a very big advantage, you know? You have to be an early bird. You have to keep it. You have to keep it in mind. This page is still not turned. By the way, <laughs> how this page ends, um, 
what put what Putin does, his following steps will define it. Uh, how realistic is what I'm saying about that uh, the occupation will lead to liberation of these objects? I think that we have to publicly ask it with a sharp question be given. If China, if India, nuclear states, uh, South African Respo Republic, Brazil, the non-nuclear, but uh, oh, these are nuclear. Oh. They have nuclear power plants. Yeah, I, I mean that um, once they were actually producing, but yeah, they have the potential. If these countries will not give their word right now, uh, on this Pandora's box opening, that's not an advantage for them. It's not beneficial for them in long-term perspective. If they give their word, this may be done publicly by some decisions, uh, then the world will be under huge threat. The situation will be, you know, anthropogenic disaster will become an argument in a fight if they don't. So Ukraine has to raise a question Yes, we need to raise the stakes because it gives an impression that we are following the terrorists. The world is reactive, not proactive. We have to be proactive because later, when the risks just become immense, they're growing now and they may reach the maximum point. Later, we will not have time to respond properly. Okay, one thing is clear for everyone that... Um, the only way is the results of the front line. Without this, without this, unfortunately, international system demonstrated its bankruptcy in terms of responding to that. And I fully agree. Uh, well, be, well, maybe Yuri has more expertise. He gives some still... Uh, some credit to IAEA, but all these games during disasters, it seemed to me, is just a distraction. We have to just ask it clearly. IAEA did everything they could. Now, we need to have another consolidated opinion of all from other countries, nuclear countries, including those I mentioned, to make the disaster impossible. And, uh... We also have some aspects an issue, something that's, that we'll observe. We understand that this has certain positive aspect. Uh, uh, Russia understands at the top level their incapacity of occupying it with military means. This is a signal that they can see that Ukrainian capacity and our armed forces capacity so we can do it, you know, with the Ukrainian territory in Crimea. So they can't like basically oppose us. And the measures they take, uh, we can see that they do not want to develop the territories they occupy. This is for me actually a proof they start thinking about the scenarios. They even, well, unfortunately, they also think about a scenario of this destroyed land, burnt land when they leave. This is a huge challenge for us again. With what means? How can we avoid? How can we minimize, mitigate the consequences? We have to be ready. And um, this is this is a real thing, something we can see, like <sighs> all these anthropogenic incidents we may actually observe and witness. And um, what we can see in Crimea, in eastern regions, we need, have to know now how to respond. To these things in the future. The world is getting used to Russian war against Ukraine. What well, actually is my concern that even the language, you know, of evaluation does not correspond to the level of threats that we have in the world right now. I internationally, if you speak about Ukraine, the I think we have to find the proper balance. Uh, we have to prevent some stressful response and we have to avoid this stress when it comes to citizens but we have to speak the truth if we speak about zaporizhia npp maybe uh certain basic guidelines 
or some forecast of, on how the situation may theoretically evolve. People have to be ready for it. We have to be ready to respond. Uh, we know with our experience that even uh, the shelters, you know, we're looking for a shelter, whether like whether it's open or closed. You just just you should be over prepared than under prepared. It, it's always better to be prepared. More okay. So the drinking water supply. What authorities should do to have some stock at some regions to respond to these anthropogenic disasters before we get additional help. So I'll st stop at that, and I just want to clarify something, some details, okay? Yuri, um, what is the proper definition we can take, uh, we can pick to define those things Russia is doing right now? So we have ecocide, terrorism, war crimes, aggressors. Yeah, we know aggressors like a general, but what we have to speak, what we have to mention international documents, and uh, we know that if we have like a theft or robbery, okay, in criminal law it's easy, you know, we have a specific definition for, for any crime, but how can you call it properly, what we're observing, what kind of action is that, how would you offer everyone to call it just to, to have this uh, harmonized definition? We have to take everything from international law, uh, and regarding the definitions, how to call certain incidents or events, and how to call the Russian war, Ukrainian territory. Um, so the basic is UN statute, it's the basic document, and when Russia annexed Crimea, this was the act of aggression ready, according to UN statute, and Ukrainian authority had to say the trust has started war against Ukraine and uh, request the world to provide us with necessary support uh, to defend ourselves. That's what was done. Well, Valeri, I will disagree because uh, Russian aggression was called ATO, anti-terrorist operation, not the aggression. And because of that, uh, Russian aggression transformed into the Normandy format, Minsk format we had, it turned into like a civil war in eastern regions, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's what they called it, and um, we have to use these definitions today, given by international law. So Russia is acting aggressively, but the elements of this aggression is that n it's something that the world never had. Nuclear terrorism first, that we mentioned. Nobody ever had that in the world. Uh, nobody, n there was no country allowing itself to become a nuclear terrorist. And because of the practice, because of something that Russia did in Ukraine, terrorists, Russians may even start attacking nuclear objects all around the world. I think it's it may be a real case scenario. Secondly, Russia started using WMD uh, with bombarding or let's say, destroying the Kachovska HPP. This is the weapon of mass destruction. If now West, well, I mean, first of all, Ukrainian authority, first of all, I fully agree with you that uh, when we claim internationally to all the world in October that Russia is preparing to blast the dam and the HPP, where is the action plan? I agree with you. Why our embassy started saying it after the Russian? There was a clear information attack that, that it started saying that Ukraine did that, you know? We have, we have to be proactive, we have to be one step forward. Olha told it, you know, that Russia is, what Olha said, that Russia is, Russia wants to prepare this uh, serious nuclear incident there with uh, storage premises or, God forbid, blocks to be destroyed. Ukrainian authority, why doesn't it prepare any scenarios, informational scenarios, how to prevent those stuff? Just with the final definitions, what you've asked me. Well, Russia, in general, we have to say about it, at least at UNSC meeting, Russia violated all possible and impossible agreements. Uh, 
being a signatory to it, starting from uh, the Budapest Memorandum and nuclear security and safety. They say it's not a guarantee, but it doesn't matter what the document is, how it's called. Look, Medvedev, look, Medvedev, how he spoke of Budapest Memorandum. We did not give a guarantee of security. We never promised Ukraine anything. We have no commitments when it comes to security. Okay, now... When the aggression started, Russian aggression started uh, against Ukraine, the Crimea was annexed. What Putin said about green men? We have no green men there. In a month, he says, yeah, like we had them there. Now, second thing. What Putin, official. What Putin promised Biden two weeks before the aggression. No, 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 it's just the maneuvers, just the training, no threat. I'm, I guarantee there is no like threat or even full-scale invasion. Why these facts on what Russia is doing in its information war against Ukraine, not just this horrible physical one, but informational, the world would see what Russian regime is, Russian madness, Russian mad president, dictator, then it would be really easier for us to make decisions, pass these decisions in UNSC, General Assembly and IAEA. I've never heard any comprehensive like big statement given by MFA, Energoatom, Derzatom Nahlet, any of our institutions, like what should be done by IAEA in the context of nuclear terrorism, Russian terrorism. So when Chernobyl and NPP was seized and Grossi says that everything's okay with the radiation, meaning it's okay. And nobody says about the terrorism itself. On the very same day, Energoatom, Derzatom Regulovania and MFA together had to give a statement based on the IEA statute, everything that Grossi has to do and what IEA has to do, starting from the IEA board, General Assembly, the resolutions, Ukrainian authority had to do that with specific and specific officials. We have more than a year of war. Where is that policy? Where is it? I haven't seen it from our officials. So Speaking of what Russia is doing, first of all, uh, we should base it on, on international documents and standards. Russia is a signatory. Secondly, what should be spoken? We've uh, managed to survive this horrible Chernobyl tragedy uh, that actually showed how, okay, even the former USSR leadership with its instructions, guidelines, with everything that was like, these were helpless. Those officials were helpless. But we have this experience of that tragedy. And today we have to focus on these scenarios. Who can be in the risk zone when it comes to Zaporizhia uh, NPP blast, potential blast? This is a crime. All people in Ukraine should know what to do and uh, not just where to run away, what preventive measures to be taken and uh, iodine consumption. Nobody did it then in 1986 because there were no pills. It's like they're acting like ostriches, You're like hiding your head in the sand and nobody knows anything. Nobody wants to know. Yeah. So uh, this helplessness when we have with the shelters, when the key, for example, is, is heavily bombed at nights, it's one thing. But what we may have in Ukraine uh, with the biggest NPP in Europe, what may happen, the consequences, we have to be very loud at the world about the risks for Ukraine. Chernobyl, uh, cloud raised 11 kilometers up and uh, it polluted so many territories around the world you know the fukushima let's take it as an example yes six explosions of reactors at zaporizhia and pp this is apocalypse just apocalypse why nobody is speaking of it why nobody is speaking at iaea un at unsc an African country that has some economic difficulties and they have famine. So we're f focusing just purely on Ukrainian grain. Yes, they don't want to think about it. We have nuclear countries, though, who use nuclear energy. Why Ukraine does not speak of it harshly? 
and clearly. What to do? I don't believe in international community efforts. Uh, I don't believe in international security institutions. They already demonstrated their uselessness. Like the League of Nations before the World War II. They're absolutely dysfunctional. They're fully corrupted because of Russia. Russia is controlling the votes in IAEA and, uh, and in UN. In UNSC, of course, they control the secretariats of these organizations and traditionally corrupting, spreading its impact via corruption. It's well known. But people cl close their eyes. I believe in one thing, in the power of Ukrainian armed forces. And uh, yesterday's event has to reactivate our authorities. They have to start working again to get all necessary weapon for Ukraine. For the counteroffense not to be just successful, for it to be finished with complete liberation of our territories and rapid one. When Ukrainian army will come to Vasilivka and it's a bridge like 60 kilometers, Russians will leave everything and just forget about the explosion. They'll run away, saving their lives and that's how we can bring the aggressor to peace. That's how we can secure us in the world when it comes to nuclear disaster. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to give a couple of words. Well, basically, the level, maybe Olha will tell about it. We have different scenarios, even uh, using the NPP as an object, we can, they can blast six reactors, they can use other scenarios, but okay. But I just state that based on my experience, Ukrainian Crisis Media Center, I'm the head of the board of the center, it's an honor for me, even a year before the full-scale invasion, we, together with the governmental center, we made this leaflet on how to respond to shelling, to other threats, and I can tell you, nobody was interested in it. On the first day, on 25th of uh, February, everybody started doing this. Okay, please, don't panic. You have to be, like, calm and prepared to um, events. Please remember, February 24th, last year, Have, you have to get some minimum stock of water, some food to be, just just some some basic stuff, you know, to have some clothes, you know, to yeah, transport. If you have your personal transport, okay, we will continue doing that. But I fully agree, it's better to be prepared. Remember the Chernobyl disaster and how people responded then. My response, well, if we were prepared, then it would be different. And if there was a sincere conversation with people, and I want us raising, and I love to tell the truth, usually, and uh, to be prepared for the risks, even if these risks stay potential. But you gave us an answer. The occupation of territories as fast as we can, but we don't have an answer for the later. The occupation of territories, uh, 60 kilometers, uh, it's a huge way still. Thank, well, I really want our army to uh, do it fast with great maneuverability, like we had it next to Kherson and Kharkiv. I really want that to happen. But we have to understand that Russia is in such a condition they uh, will still be there after the occupation. And those threats to objects, the shelling, they can shell us via the border, missiles, you know, it's still, it's still, it's still there. It's an open question. So, uh, yeah. I'll stop at this, but I just want to tell you when we had these regular, when we had the regular shelling, uh, when the infrastructure objects were shelled, you know, the, with the transformers, you know, soon we'll have winter. Is I'm interested. Is anybody doing this? We have to doing not just 
to respond instantly, but we have to prevent that. Be proactive. Well, I just want to ask you this scenario. We speak hypothetically of risks, blast. Are there any other ways? Okay, do we have any other threat levels? For the nuclear object to be used for the blackmail, of course. <clears> hmm. <throat> Uh, Grossi says that we need to have a reserve line for the Zaporizhia heat station. Uh, yeah, he, he speaks of that line, so Russia is actually uh, controlling that line. So the line that... This line was destroyed. That actually connects them to the unified energy system and... Uh, the occupier simply did not give a chance to repair that line. This is a planned event, so they want to drag their own line and connect it. And uh, we have to finish that process. So, 750 kilowatt line will be destroyed in our system. They will reswitch it for their own needs. They take it from the NPP by the line. Uh, they will switch on the fifth block, switch it off, and again, blackmail us. The other option, Grossi yesterday in the evening, he gave this statement uh, for the cooling pond to be secured because uh, it may be mined, you know, the bank of Dnipro next to the NPP, the mine detonation may happen because uh, animals, because of animals' movement. On April 12th, you know, the detonation at the territory, they also have uh, trenches and ammo kept there. So they may, it may be an incident, an accidental detonation. You know, it may give harm, a lot of harm. So it's not necessary to mine the reactor, okay? We can mine... Uh, You can stop the water coming to the cooling pond. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we'll stop with the options because we have different ways. Yes, I understand. Important thing. The emergency response. The emergency response is destroyed since the moment of occupation at the NPP because there is no local authority being trained there. Security service, uh, medics, state emergency service. There's no one. All those who respond to, to it, it's like there was a special training on what population of Nerhodar should do. In this case, nobody knows. On Friday, a lady came to Nerhodar who is heading the Federal Medical Biological Agency yeah, from Russia. Yeah, do they have 10 beds for the disaster? Yeah, this is a preparation, informational preparation. Uh, some new equipment and some training. They were uh, measuring the radiation level. Last week it took place. But I just want to support Yuri. Uh, such a behavior of Russia, it will affect the future of nuclear energy in the world not just from the standpoint of nuclear terrorism, but uh, so many states will start thinking, oh, they could do it? No? They, someone could simply take a nuclear object without consequences? Why do we need nuclear stations? Nuclear power uh, helps to uh, actually, helps us to stick to Paris Agreement because it reduces the CO2 level. Yeah, but I just really want to stop with that. Thank you. Basically, I think the key ideas we've given. I'll draw the line. What is clear? Uh, what can we summarize from my expert's opinion first? Is that uh, the new stage and uh, blackmailing or using the similar ways using the uh, weapon of mass destruction
пані Кошарна сказала. Now on what Ms. Kosharna spoke. The visit of the head of the federal agency, Russian federal agency. I just want to remind you, let's not forget that we had a visit last month after meeting Putin. She visited the eastern regions of Ukraine with uh, some cars, with vehicles, closed ones. But it was clear that these were the vehicles to be used uh, to respond to WMDUs. The third USSR medical department, this is their predecessor, uh, the institution which is responsible for response to nuclear, chemical disasters. So they tried to do something like that in Mariupol, we know that, yeah. They even say that uh, they had some, not just preparation was there, but even some testing, but they didn't move too far. All that. All right. The presence of this person as in Zaporizhia, it gives a signal. Nazovni. Russia is sending a signal that they are ready to continue not just blackmailing, but they are ready to actually use nuclear object for that kind of for that purpose. Last year, when uh, I, I I want to remind you, and I want you to tell it to all the citizens, I don't see a direct threat. For the Russia to use uh, ballistic missiles, or even tactical nuclear weapon. Uh, the discussion on anthropogenic disasters with nuclear objects. I think that everyone is very confused right now. We can even see it. Uh, Ukrainian representatives still don't know how to respond in a unified way. I do hope that they analyze the situation as the US president said, Risha Sunak also said that, that they analyze situation and they will give a consolidated opinion response because current response, we have to put it at the maximum level. Otherwise, the next steps will be there. Our, we really don't want to help Russia and Putin to raise escalation, if we can say. When we speak of these threats, we give a pass to that area as well, but we realize it. I think in this case, the game is very clear. We need to have some, we need to have some countermeasures. We need to know what definitions to be used, proper ones, and what means to respond. These means have fully, uh, have to be fully corresponding, corresponding to level of threat. This should be very, very well thought. Informational activity. It can't happen so that in such cases, and uh, as always, these happen without like any advance awareness raising. So it happens accidentally. We need to have this channel for public awareness raising. Vladimir Zelensky cannot put it all the time in Twitter, on like social media. It can't be the only channel for journalists, for foreign journalists. Like we are surprised why journalists give different opinions on the situation. Well, because we don't have one single representative, like a presidential speaker, like in other countries, an official person responsible for, uh, a person who is responsible for confidentiality, for access to information. We have to stop being amateurs, you know, please. We do not need to have 15 people speaking of what's happening in nuclear security. Sorry for being emotional. I'm just, uh, I, can't, I can't help it. You can't play with citizens' attitudes, but not with that, you know. We do not need to lose the trust of our partners because the trust, especially in details, is the key. They. If they get, get our explanations, they have to trust because sometimes it's really hard to respond very quickly. So we have a lot to do. We have to definitely go back to plans, responses, scenarios. I understand that 
They can say we're doing it, just not publicly. Let's be honest. We know what's being done, what's not. But we also have a public part of that. In public part, we can see that coordination, interagency coordination is not something we need during the war, when we have a nuclear threat, when escalation is rising very high. A bureaucratic uh, system, the officials can't be tired because the war risks will just grow. But I'm pretty sure we'll make our conclusions. Uh, we really want to wish our partners and our so-called neutral mediators to be realistic, to be rational, first of all, to realize that this is the stage where we can still stop and prevent disasters and Russian attempts to destroy the world order. But we have to do it now, we have to start now. And yes, sometimes it irritates us, it annoys us, that everything's moving too slow externally, but we have to understand that the share of our uh, efforts is too big. If we are doing it persistently in one voice, and if we do all the same, get the results, starting from the president and to the citizens, then the partners can change their opinion. We know that, we all know that. But I really would love this to be also a tool for systematic activity of our authorities. I would also like our officials not to forget that they have a chance just not just to make decisions as a group of people, group of people who have certain uh, duties and uh, scope of competence, they can ask experts, people with uh, people with a lot of expertise, and uh, they may use this expertise. I would really advise you to. Talk to Ukrainian experts. They definitely stand for Ukrainian national interests. Please do not ignore the opinions of different people because what we face right now is a new thing for us. It hasn't been used in the world ever. We have to bring this public discussion. Maybe we did not bring the details, but we have to make it more open anyway. <laughs> The tone has to be like we mentioned. Okay, so the risks are underestimated and we need to enhance the response. Thank you for attention, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the translation, of course, and uh, we definitely will send this video summary in different languages, to many addresses, to different countries, to various institutions, and I do hope that this will be our contribution in the process of bringing the truth to the world, like what consequences we may have, and uh, I do hope that the response of international community, and uh, there will be a pressure in political decision-making process, a proper pressure that should be there. Thank you for your attention, and uh, keep holding on. I really want us all to have these risks mitigated as much as we can, and uh, glory to Ukraine. Thank you.